public theory was clear, um, and Darcy and I are both processors um, and collectors because we need product. We need product desperately, and that's really our message. How many of you guys are, are governmental or municipal, would you say? And how many are waste haulers? Okay, good. You're just trying to figure out which way to, to go with a little bit of it. So, um, you know, we're throughout several states here. We want to go to the next one, maybe we'll try and go there. So we're clear, we've got about 80 people. We do about 15 million pounds of carpet in the state of Illinois. Um, I don't have Darcy's money, but uh, we've got about two and a half million to our operation. We'll get into a little bit about it, and we're rolling into our stage two. So we're going to talk a little bit about the collection, the processing, and the products. So this is, how much is there? We talked a lot about this at the, at the uh, summit as well. The, the CRI groups, they say 14 to 17 pounds per person per year of carpet. You know, uh, between our homes and our businesses, that's about what we generate. Uh, so, you know, you look at what is in Illinois, that would be about 180 million pounds per year. The top was the 2009 study, which you know, they showed 2%. Wisconsin had a study, they had 3.9% when they did it in 2010, 2011. So you're, you're just trying to rough in the figures. How big of a problem are we looking at? How much, for me, how much available supply is there? Uh, next slide. So this would be taking that same calculations and kind of rolling through just the Chicago metropolitan area. Uh, we have seen, and this is last year, and I'm sure you'll agree it's getting worse, but we have on the far right 60% nylons, 15% polypropylene, 35% PET. PET is rising, but you know, kind of gets the idea of the volumes that were available. I want to keep going along a little bit. So, obstacles, we talked about the contamination. Uh, the cost of the transportation is huge. You know, if you were in Bloomington Normal, we, we both would love to take it and we want it. Uh, it's that cost to get it all the way to our processing centers. I've got one down in uh, St. Louis. Uh, we both got one in Chicago. We've got one over in Kansas City. You know, it's that cost of transportation is really the killer to be able to compete with the cost of landfill. Landfill is so cheap here in the Midwest versus other areas. Um, population density, you know, so we all want to compete in the 600, 608 zip code because we've got a large group there. Um, instability, supply, and demand, public awareness. I want to go to the next one. So these are our two big, our two big problems that we face. This thought of the curbside. You know, the short version, my story two years ago, we had the floods up in Lake County. I got a recycling facility. It's an hour away from my place. And I didn't even want to drag it all, throw it in the truck, and get it up to work. Because it's so easy to just throw it on the curb. So if, you, if, if you're based on floods like mine, then you're going to pay $1,200 to $1,800 to replace a carpet in your house, right? Empire today is going to roll on by Luna, uh, Florida Core up by me. They're going to come in, they're going to give you that price, and they're going to say, I want $150 to $300 for tear out and removal. So you already got this big expense. You, you don't want to spend that two, three hundred dollars. When you can just put it on the curb and it magically disappears. Over four weeks, I can leave it out. The waste management truck comes by and it's gone at no cost. That is our biggest problem. We can recycle it. We just don't know how to get that product in an effective way because it, it's so cheap <coughs> to throw it away. Second one, you did a great, a great job, so I won't go too deep in it, but if, if you go into a Home Depot store, you'll see the 72 hour and small rack. Flip those samples around. They are all PET now. Two years ago, those were nylons and power brokers. Every one of the samples on the 72 hour, they're, you know, the fast rack stuff they're really trying to move is PET. It's because the, the cost of the PET fiber is 70 to 90 cents, where the nylons are a dollar fifty to a dollar eighty, they could sell a much cheaper product. Uh, the problem 
is the life cycle of it is about a third of the life of the nylon. Nylon has a seven to ten year lifespan. These PET carpets are typically a three to four year lifespan. But again, when I'm faced with flooded, I'm faced with a fifteen hundred hour carpet replacement, or maybe it's a nineteen hundred dollar carpet replacement that go with the nylon. What am I looking to do? Get out for fifteen hundred dollars? I can't afford this. Uh, I'm not thinking long term. And so this is the big issue. For us as recyclers, there is no effective methods for PET right now. And we, it's like catch and release. We throw it back into the land. That's all we do. We've got some innovative programs. If any communities have um, a parking lot type thing, there's some of these California initiatives. There's this one called Cars Carpet as a Rock Substitute, where we can use some of these undesirables as sort of a, a filler that really has some really neat advantages. What we need is somebody who's got sort of a parking lot type project to talk about. So if anybody's got anything like that, please see me. I'd love to get somebody signed up to, to do it. It really does threaten to destroy what we do. Um, the uh, rise of PT, they say, will be 50% of what we're doing in three to four years. And, you know, we just, we can't afford to pick up the nylons charge you guys as municipalities or back to stores at a rate that our industry will continue to thrive. Um, while we were doing this, Jennifer, I got an email from Carpet America Recovery Effort Group, and they actually just put an RFP on for a 20-hour week person to just simply study this program and come up with solutions. So they're trying. That was a nice email to see. They are trying to get some staff on board to solve the problem. Um, we had some good discussions about trying to push this back on to legislation if possible, because it uh, this is the bay of our industry. You know, we, we don't know that we can survive with these low-grade fires. I'll leave it at that moment. So this is where we're currently got, these are all customers where we have a trailer or container or drop-off point within the Chicago land area. Um, if we go to the next one, we will get into. So this is really what we've got. This is our collection fund. We've got to provide solutions for whatever your situation is. You know, you may be a community. Well, we really would love to put 53 foot trailer. That's the most cost. If you don't have the room, can we do a 28 foot trailer? We don't have the room. We have a uh, we outsource with uh, Gold Green. They, they do a container model, and that's really their niche of it. And then we do some smaller containers, and we're also doing a bag model. Because you've got to custom tailor our solution to what you guys can fit within your program. Uh, go to the next one, please. So this is our store direct model. Uh, we've got about 35 to 45 drop trailers. So typically, we incentivize with the waste savings over what their cost is. You know, we typically try and offer thirty to fifty dollar ton savings off of roll off dumpsters. Um, if if we can't win it with price because they're just it's a lot of work for them in their minds, we sell or shame them with promotional materials to education of the stores and consumers. And if you go to the next one, this is some of the promo materials that to really try to push <coughs> the green image to it. So we do some door stickers, uh, banners, uh, statues, some press stories, logos. You know, these are the, the items we use to try and, and green them to get them. If you can't sell them, you shame them. You know, the guy down the street will recycle them, will come on board. So that's been a lot of our business model. Uh, next one. Yeah, so we do some public-private partnerships. This one was up in Wisconsin. Uh, the city of Watertown, we got a local store. And so what we do is a public-private partnership. They put a community drop trailer at the store. Uh, you can see right here, this is in their community papers, description of waste. Carpeting must be taken a wise way forward in 809 Station Street, Watertown. We no longer accept carpet curbside for landfill disposal. So that has been a really nice model. It's worked really well doing a public private. Um, the store actually will bring it all in. They'll charge the residents five to fifteen dollars. Most of the time they don't even charge it, but that's what they try to do. 
and the community saves about $200 over landfill costs. So that public-private thing works good. Um, the other model is the strictly public. This is City of Milwaukee. We drop some trailers. Um, we charge them less than what it costs to go to the landfill, and it's been a very effective program. Uh, next one, Viola Landfill. Same type of model. We'll put it right at the landfill head. Uh, that's been a very effective model. Uh, next one, CMD. You know, working with people like Wendy. Uh, next one. We're rolling out a website to try and really do a bag model where we would mail the bags or our participating uh, drop locations would have the bags. Consumer can self serve, buy a bag more or less off the website. Uh, we can mail it to them for a cost or they can pick it up and they would bring it back with a, with a receipt type model to try and offer something to the residential consumers you know, to really have an option. And the price of the bag includes the price of the recycling. Exactly. Box. You know, I mean, you know, the waste management's got a bag spare model. It's, it's, you know, a, a mini version really of those types of models. That type of concept is really what you're trying to do. Give the consumer the ability to sort of self serve. The big problem is if you put that bag that will about four or five hundred pounds part of it, and we're asking to bring it to a location. It's really more a uh, Mr. Superman. You know, it's really more of a uh, measuring cup. You know, they can fill it, but you have to fill the bag and take the truck around and roll it back up. So there's some inherent problems with it, but at least gives the consumer some type of ability to do you know, a self serve delivery function. Um, next. So this is our plan. We do the guns, like uh, that those those 20,000 dollars guns. We do a sharing operation. Uh, we turn it into the fluff. The bottom is a picture of a plant. And then uh, you know we go into the palletized forms. Uh, Darcy, you know, we, we kind of laugh because our presentations are like nearly identical with this stuff. So but that's really what we do. That's our model is to turn it back into a usable polymer. Um, automotive industry, uh, office furniture, um, markets like that is really a lot of what these nine-less are do. The next one. Uh, this is our this is our plant. So this kind of gives you an idea. We're hitting how so far to get carpet, which is insane. Uh, the second line out currently brought in a lot about clear. So we figure we're bringing in about 5% of uh, the commercial, 14% of the residential, 12% of the poly, and 14% of the PT is what we think we're bringing in. So our current rate at our plant, we process about 15 million pounds a year of carbon. We have capacity today at my plant to do 42,000 pounds. I cannot get enough carbon. So, you know, I'm all the way out in these far from states trying to get enough to run a plant as an entrepreneur and bring something up when, you know, 70, 80% of it is still going into the landfills. That's the frustrating thing. You know, we talk about the transportation. Dark State talked about this too. She's collected in, you know, Chicago. She's got lots in Kansas City. I'm driving from Kansas City sometimes over with stuff. She's bringing stuff all the way over there because we're entrepreneurs with facilities, but we're struggling for material, which is insane. And you know, it's going to the landfills. Um, I'm going to go to the next one. Some of the pictures of things you can do. You know, it, it is a petroleum based product. Uh, and this is a picture of some of the different items. The one we brought to the show is the next slide. This is the one we're really excited about. Go to the next one, please. So this is the echo bin. We're doing this out of our polypropylene carbon backing, and then some of our polypropylene. Um, it's a really, really cool item. You know, I mean, our real pitch here today is we want your carbon, and this is what we can make it into. You know, something that you guys can understand and has a good market use. So it's a, it is a polypropylene four yard dumpster. Um, I mean, our ideal thing would be to work with communities to get your carpet and work to try and get some of these spec out into the community. It's a really nice dumpster. It is cost competitive with the metal dumpsters. 
Um, this has some really innovative structural foam technology. You can kind of see a picture right here. It actually has sort of a nitrogen uh, dispersion that really gives it almost like an aircraft wing strength and rigidity to it. So stop by the booth. We'd love to, to show it to you. We're really proud of it. It really gives us a plan going forward. Uh, let's see, next one. So, takeaway, you know, we're doing about 10% is what we figure in the MSA market and about 6% of our car. That's about what we're able to pull out of waste stream right now. Um, we are really pushing regional recycling and advocating local job creation in what we're doing. The barriers, curbside, I, we're running short. I've got the Stanley Steamer commercial. I don't know if you guys have seen that one where the guy's rolling down the street. You know, he sees the other thing and he starts crying. We could have saved that one. That's how we view it. <laughs> you know, we could save that. We don't need to just leave this on the curbside. We need your guys' help to get it off of uh, The PET, that is the inner pound road, or back end of the elephant, I think is even better. Uh, creating these networks. You know, what we're trying to work with you guys on is public private partnerships, public partnerships. If you have the ability within your areas to have some type of a collection of that we can drive the consumers to, to fill trailers, is really what we want. Uh, specifying the city contract version. You know, ticket fees for us. Toshi, who develops our uh, bins, he's out in California. What, what's the ticket fees up? Like hundreds of dollars? Just touching a hundred dollars. You know, and, and they get much better recycling and diversion. It's so cheap to just throw this stuff in the garbage. That's what they're doing. Right next door to us in uh, Arizona is free. Yeah, it's zero. So how do you compete? Bottom line, we have the technology in place. You know, we we can raise the current diversion rate from 10 percent to 50 to 60 percent of access to the raw materials. California is currently at about 55 percent. Is what care is shown. So it can be done. You know, in Illinois. What California has done was significant tipping fees. They've also done, you know, their 83 2098 laws, which incentivize recycling. And we are all mixed on that. Our biggest thing on that is the PET out of the way that entrepreneurs can do. <coughs> so that's really all, all I have.
is built around the true thermoplastic cytochromatopathy and myelin's polyamnesic. PET, until recently, polyesters were not thermoplastic, they were thermoset. It is the new generation of poly, uh, polyesters that are today semi thermal. They're not fully recycled. They can be fully recycled if the UFERS or the system for recovery is dedicated to PET has got the value, as much value, the actually is more expensive than polypropylene. But because for every one pound of polypropylene, there is capacity of 500 pounds of processing, it sort of dissolves into the bank. The PET is a new amount of material that's just been thrown out in the open without any existing facilities to deal with it because the science of conversion is not exactly the same. It's not saying that PET is a lesser value. PET is extremely robust. You, you can drive a truck over a with a, a, a right. I mean, people put, uh, what, what is it? The, uh, the pills that are the sweet or something, they put in it and they generate something. The mentos. The mentos. Yeah. You put that in, in some aluminum tanks, and it's going to explode. The PET will take it. So it's a fabulous material. It is just that the development of the chemistry has gone faster than the development of the, of the mechanism. So very soon, three years, three years, it will become readily available that PET will then get its rightful value back. Now it's the value. It's the, it's, the, it's the black sheep. Even though it's as good a sheep as any other kind of sheep, but it is. It is right now. Yeah, uh, so you've listed some nice barriers here. And from the care board perspective, do you think you could address those through voluntary initiatives, or do you feel that regulation and legislation is needed? I mean, we had a little conversation last night. There is, you know, I'm a member of CARE. Darcy's a member of CARE. Um, CARE is really an organization run by the bills that there's competing agendas within, uh, you know, we're a small organization, but there's competing agendas. You know, the mills really don't want to deal with the mess that they're putting on the communities, if, you ask, if you're asking for buying a personal opinion. You know, a mill is now building a product, a PET product, that they can make two to three sales at the time they used to make one, because it wears out much more. And they can sell for 30% less, so they can undercut the guys that still do the old mobile nylon model. So, you know, some mills, not all, Shaw, you know, some of those guys I think are high road. There, there is a new mill, Engineer Residence, that's really been driving this change um, to this low, low cost polymer. But like I say, you're going to replace it two to three times as often. That is going to put the burden on us as waste people to have, you know, currently, literally, Darcy and I, we throw it out. I, I, I brought Tomoshi with me, you know, he's developed the bins. He is a classic genius, but right now, it's all going in the I guess, I guess my, my basic question was, you know, from all the different models that you've started to discuss here, I mean, there's lots of options. Is there a way that you can get the economics to work and, you know, get government to do, whether it's the bands at the curb? Or, do, you, do you think there's a combination here of, like, what would, have you thought through that as a care board, as the care board, I guess? Or is that still in the flux? The competing agenda is that we can't come to a conclusion, you know? Recyclers will say there's not enough value in that item for us to, you know, we bring it back. It's just not enough cost to process it. So. Yes, sir. Uh, and Nick, we'll, we'll talk definitely uh, at lunch on Mike Motor with the uh, DCEO. Um, but from the, the standpoint of the types of programs that we operate, um, you know, is, is the barrier, is it? Science is it more coming up with a model? Um, is it the technology? Is it the market side? And we'll, we'll we can talk more in detail about that. But that's all I'm sitting here listening to. I mean, from the standpoint, 
standpoint of our programs and the things that we can do in terms of providing grants and financial incentives. Uh, it's really what we're at. Yeah. From a business standpoint, as opposed to the organizational standpoint. Anyway, we can talk about that. Okay, well, you know, we left it as a group. We will innovate our way out of this. I mean, that's just what we do in this country. It's weird. We innovate our way out of this. As the guys in the field right now, we are just struggling with the value of the public. But, you know, something like these cars things and some of these other fascinating technologies with waste water as well, what we need, we're little guys. You know, we need some help. Uh, we've got the ideas from the groups. It's not how do we get the infrastructure. Because we can use it for filtration of wastewater, some of these, some of these carpets. We can use it in bins. There's other things we can do. It's just a little help. Yeah, we can invest in, you know, go green. Uh, on the collection side of this, if there's uh, opportunities in terms of the technology, uh, you know, demonstration projects, or implementing uh, improvement technology, you know, that's again where we can be involved. Okay. Can we hold off make sure I want to make sure we get our seeds plus the well, I mean, I, I have a lot of similar things. You're not getting like, out of your brother. I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. 